thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak today, given that I do hold a different view from the majority of people here. And I do commend you for coming out on a day like today, when it is pretty grim and miserable in terms of weather and comfort, for you to come out and show your concern and tell me and the government what you believe. I respect that and I commend you for doing so. We are all on the same side in one respect, as Dale said earlier on. We all do want to protect Thompson Square. And to that end, I want to talk through some of the aspects of option one, the breach proposal that has been identified as the preferred option by RMS, to, to take you through some of the concerns that have been expressed to me, and I hope to put some facts in relation to them. Now, the first thing to say is that there is some fairly colourful and emotive language used about what's being proposed, bulldozing and destroying and so on. Can I put on the table, and I think everybody does know this is a fact, but put it there for the record, that not a single building around Thompson Square is under any threat from this proposal. No building, no building is going to be touched, damaged, demolished, or anything of the sort. It's simply a fact that we need to acknowledge. The second concern, and it was quite a legitimate one, I believe, that was expressed with the earlier proposals, the earlier draft drawings that were shown about what could be built was the height of the approaches of the bridge. We all know the bridge is going to be about four metres higher than the current one. The bridge deck itself over the river is currently about seven and the proposal is for about 11. So about four metres higher. The original proposal also had it angling up to arrive in the square at a much higher level than is currently the case to make the gradient for traffic much smoother. The problem with that proposal, and it was pointed out to me and to others, was that it meant that the, the road alignment would have to be raised on the approaches into the square, which would lift it above the current road alignment in front of these buildings over here, and therefore impact on the sight lines across the square. That, that concern was expressed, that concern was identified, and the proposal was amended precisely as a result of that being identified, so that that's no longer the case. The bridge is still four metres higher. The approach road slopes up much more uh, gently, less accentuated, so that it arrives at the current road level at about the, just below the floor level of the lowest house on the square. And from that point on, is no higher than the current alignment of Bridge Street, so that it doesn't impact on the sight lines across the square. That's an example of the RMS genuinely attempting to take on board concerns that are pointed out and, and address those so that the impact which was unacceptable is removed. The third concern that's been expressed to me has been the width of the bridge and therefore the width of the approach road through Thompson Square. It is, it's pointed out that the current bridge is narrow, it's two lanes and a fairly narrow two lanes at that, the new bridge is proposed to be wider. It would initially be designed to carry two lanes of traffic, but would be then capable of modification to three lanes, quite consciously and deliberately. It would be a three-lane bridge at its widest. One of the reasons, it is not four lanes, and I'm sorry, I've got to put that on the, on the, on the agenda. People have been spreading that, and it's simply false. It's, it's not four lanes, it never will be four lanes. And I'm sorry, I've got to say that, People can shout back at me, but facts are facts. That's not what's being proposed, and I'm very confident it's not what the Minister would ever approve. The reason for that, and again, the concern was expressed quite legitimately and identified that that would mean losing more of Thompson Square. Now, the, the current road alignment, the current road alignment obviously is a cutting through Thompson Square, which does cut through the square and Bridge Street, there are two roads. They'll be consolidated into one. For the vast majority of the distance from the bridge to the top, the new road would be no wider than the existing two consolidated. I, I have to admit there's a small exception right on this corner near the roundabout. But, uh, do I live here? Yes, I do. And my ancestors are also on the anchor on Thompson Square. Um, but I'm trying to deal in in fact, the new road will not be wider than the current amount of bitumen through the square already. 
it will simply be reshaped. It will be lower than the houses and buildings fronting Thompson Square, so it will not interfere with the sidelines. If there are other improvements that can be identified as a result of people expressing specific concerns, I'd be only too happy to take those up because I took up those previous two with the RMS and I'm only too happy to do what there is to improve the outcome. But I've got to be honest with you. Oh, wait a minute. Alright, if you're not going to listen, I'll just continue anyway and talk a bit louder. Is that not an option? I want to address the real issues. Okay, 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 okay. Let, let Kev finish. Let, let's be fair. Let's be fair. Let's be fair. Thanks, Ben. I just want to be fair to him and say I don't believe the language that is being used about destroying, removing, desecrating Thompson Square. I think Thompson Square will come out enhanced, and that's just not my opinion. It's not just my opinion. In 2004, Hawkesbury Council commissioned the New South Wales Government Architect's Office to prepare a master plan for Windsor. To enhance Thompson Square, a suggestion they made was to build a new bridge on that alignment we're talking about with the road alignment down through Bridge Street. The New South Wales Government Heritage Office, uh, Architect's Office, I'm sorry, made that proposal in 2004. They weren't considered environmental vandals. They were actually proposing it to what they said was an enhancement of Thompson Square. So I need to be feeding and with you and say, I'm only too willing to listen to practical suggestions to improve it, but I do not believe the most, that most of the concerns and fears that people have expressed need to be there. I don't think they're warranted. I'm happy to listen to continue, and I'll stay here for the afternoon to hear other speakers. And thank you very much for hearing me out. Yeah, here we go, more trucks. Yep, okay. Um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Okay. Governor Lachlan Macquarie gave this place to us in 1811. Since then, it's been in continual public use. Not one time has it been out of action. It's been a place to trade, a place to socialise and to celebrate, also a place to commemor commemorate and to mourn. Just seven years earlier than Macquarie's declaration was the only ever armed attempt to overthrow the Australian government. The leader of that rebellion was lynched by the Rum Corps in this square. That makes this place sacred ground. The man who was about to speak probably knows, uh, knows a great deal about New South Wales politics and probably maybe a little bit about revolution. Until recently, he was a local resident living at East Carriage He knows how important Thompson Square is to the local people and the people of Australia. He used to come through here every day. He's a former member of the New South Wales Heritage Council. He's the current patron, patron of the Prospect Heritage Society. He's also the leader of the New South Wales Opposition, Mr John Robertson. <laughs> <laughs> 